Welcome back everyone to my let's play of Star Tropics 2 Zoda's Revenge. In the last episode, Mr. Tumnus made his way through the first part of the collapsed mine and uh, he got an upgrade to his uh, psychic abilities. So he can shoot it a little bit further, it's a little bit stronger, it's pretty much on par with the, uh, the dagger now and has a faster rate of fire so uh, we'll be using it uh, at least for this dungeon for the most part. We will get an upgraded uh, melee weapon uh, after this dungeon, but this dungeon can be a little uh, tricky. Uh, I want to make sure that we jump off that thing real quick there to get some medicine. And you want to jump over to the left here uh, normally, but I'm just going to show what happens if you forget to do it or you uh, miss the jump. You just end up in this room where you have to defeat these three big cobras. And once you do that, uh, a platform will appear. Uh, you can jump on it and uh, take those stairways up and you end up on this side here where the, these cactus men are. But before we go on, we want to head back to this room and defeat these three uh, scorpions. Because doing so will uh, blow open a hole in the wall over there. And you want to go over there because uh, there's some medicine over there. And uh, we got some uh, a tough mini boss and uh, a tough boss uh, in this uh, section of the mine. So. Uh, medicine will be very, very important. Uh, now, I guess the game developers knew that uh, the mini boss and the boss were going to be really, really tough. So they actually include a new special item, uh, a new magical item in this uh, dungeon to uh, help us out. So here we have these uh, treasure chests. In the last dungeon, uh, I hit them with the dagger just to show what happens. Uh, and they turn into coins, and the coins go really, really fast, and they're hard to hit. So yeah, you want to take these guys out by hitting them with your psychic abilities. Uh, I'll just show off what happens if you hit them with a knife again. See, yeah, they turn into those coins. Those coins go really, really fast. Uh, they go around the room very spastically, and they're uh, hard to hit, and they can take off a lot of your life. You have another secret passageway up here. Get some more medicine. And one good advantage of the uh, upgraded uh, psychic abilities is it can actually take out these uh, boulders here. So, this kind of reminds me of uh, that one part in uh, Star Tropics 1 in the alien spaceship where you, uh, the floor was uh, hot and you had to jump back and forth between uh, the three little uh, sections of the floor to uh, avoid getting hit. And I did that really, really poorly. I got hit a bunch of times, so good thing uh, Mr. Tumnus picked up uh, some medicine. So you got these cactus men again. Remember, you don't want to destroy them on the uh, same axis as them because they blow up and they uh, shoot cactus balls out in the four cardinal directions. So try to take them out diagonally. There we go. And here we end up with the mini boss. So we have two tracks there. Uh, he'll appear on one of the tracks uh, and just shoot uh, across really fast. Uh, he shoots cannonballs at you. You can jump the cannonballs, but they're kind of fast. Uh, so it can be difficult. But what makes it really, really difficult is uh, he shoots these two cactus men out. And if you defeat uh, the cactus men, uh, he'll throw out more of them. So, yeah, they, they get in your way. They block your shots. And uh, they're really fast. They move pretty fast. So, uh, once again, if they get on top of you and hit you, uh, he'll probably take uh, maybe one or two hits. Uh, because remember, uh, this game, the invincibility frames aren't, uh, they don't last very long, so. We use up our medicine, because we'll get some more a little bit. You could use your star if you want to, uh, but I'm going to save that for the, the main boss. The main boss is really tough. It might be the toughest boss, so. I guess it's probably a tie between him and uh, Zoda X. So, they all have a... Kind of a weird gimmick to him, I guess. Ooh, we got these uh, ghost miners. They kind of remind me of the uh, the pirate uh, ghosts uh, in uh, Chapter Five of Star Tropics One. Now up ahead is uh, the way we want to go, but before we do that, we want to take out these snakes because doing so will open up a hidden passageway here. We want to hit the wall up top there to get some more medicine. And we're going to head back down and uh, open up this treasure chest because it has our second star. The only two stars in the game. So, but we'll make uh, really good use of them. 
So you don't have to worry about taking out these snakes at least. Sneak on in. And we got these, uh, looks like pencils that come out of the wall. But they hurt, so. And as always, you have very limited invincibility frames, so if you get hit by one, you might get hit twice by it uh, as it goes through. And here is the boss, the Ghost Miner. And uh, he does uh, several different things. He jumps around the room, uh, he pounds the ground uh, with his hammer, and that stuns you. Uh, even if you like jump uh, into the air, uh, the stun lasts a while, and it's probably going to stun you. See, yeah, I was in the air, but the stun still uh, hit me. Uh, the rocks bounce around, uh, and they get in your way. They can damage you as well. So uh, they basically form a shield for him there. Yeah, see, I had a whole bunch of uh, shots blocked. But if you save both your stars for him, you should be able to finish him off. So otherwise, like I said, he's really, really tough. So imagine how many times it would have hit me if I uh, didn't have those stars. But once we uh, complete that, we finish this pretty long chapter. And we get to have a short chapter after this. And we reward it with completing this long chapter with a long block. The four block. Necessary for getting a Tetris in uh, the game Tetris. You have to get them if you want to get like a really high score. Because the more lines you complete at once, the, uh, the higher your score. And with that, Mr. Tumnus is going to use the Oxford Wonder World again. Use the magic words. And where will Mr. Tumnus be uh, transported to this time? Let's find out. As always, the pages flip. And we get to see Mr. Tumnus travel through the little blue uh, hyperspace, I guess. The little uh, tunnel of time. Mr. Tumnus, the time traveler, for chapter 6. Where is Mr. Tumnus now? Looks like a, like a European place. Let's take a look around. Oh, we got somebody talking right here. You're just a visitor to Italy, yes? Oh, we're in Italy. Have a nice time, ciao. Hmm, but what time in Italy? Block, I have no block. How about some night tetrazzini or tortellini? Nope. Oh, Mr. Tumnus. I'm sure Mr. Tumnus would like some pasta, but you gotta find this block. Hey kid, need a map to the artist home? What do you say, I got Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo? Hey, the Nin Leonardo, sorry, I'm out. I still sold the last one to some big weird guy. <gasps> you don't think it could be one of the Zodas, do ya? Yeah, if you say no, he just says, okay, fine, so. Yeah, the four uh, Renaissance um, artists that the Ninja Turtles are named after. Hmm, you look familiar. You ever eat at Caesar's Hut Pizza? I'm a the pizza man. Uh, Caesar's Hut was the, uh, pizza that, uh, we remember we got for Cleopatra back in Chapter 2. Yeah. The old scientist in our villa is very inventive. I hear a cellar's full of gadgets, like, like a big toy box. Alright. So there's not many places to roam here, so. Small little overworld. It looks so thin. Here, have a big plate of pasta. Yeah, Mr. Tumnus, he likes his pasta. I don't think I've ever seen a rat that didn't like pasta. Mm hmm. Well, here we are. The uh, Leonardo's thing. See, you didn't need a map there. Oh, look, we got footprints there. Help, I can't move. Get me out of here. Someone's inside the statue. Yeah, you see the footprints? Those are the same type of footprints that uh, Zoda X left when he uh, crossed through the sewer water. So we have a little, just a short little dungeon here in this uh, chapter. Uh, Underneath Leonardo da Vinci's uh, workshop, his little lab. And it's filled with a bunch of little gadgets. Leonardo da Vinci was a, uh, besides being an artist, he was also uh, kind of an inventor. His uh, sketchbook, which he apparently uh, wrote in uh, backwards, he had to like hold it up to a mirror to, to read it. Uh, had like uh, a bunch of sketches of inventions and stuff. I think there was like a helicopter type invention, a tank. So, you know, brilliant thinkers of the world. So, the interesting things about this thing is it can be a little bit difficult to hear is uh, these jumps, uh, you have to actually press over when you're jumping and uh, 
So when you're jumping over to the right, you have to hold the right button. Uh, there's like no momentum. Uh, we have this little, little, little puzzle here. What we have to do is you have to get the uh, the marbles, the the balls into the little hole. So it's like the uh, opposite of bowling. You want to get them into the gutter. So now the second room is a little bit more tricky. There's uh, more of the uh, balls rolling around, and there's uh, blocks that kind of blocked away. So we messed up that one there, but we'll eventually get it. Oop, messed it up again. Just want to be safe. So luckily there's no boss in this dungeon, and it's very, very short. So that way, that's why I didn't feel like going after that medicine. Because getting that medicine required a lot of tricky jumps. So, this one ain't that bad, just take your time, try to position yourself, uh, you know, in a safe area. So if you can hit him on the diagonal, that's even better. Just be prepared to jump if you have to. And you can sometimes avoid the, the balls there, there we go. Two more to go. There we go. I'll take a little bit of uh, manipulating, go. ooh, out that hurt. Like I said, the good thing is, uh, this is a short dungeon. Uh, as soon as this room is, is done, you're pretty much out of the dungeon. And uh, there's a big heart coming up uh, that we can uh, pick up. So any life we lose, we'll be able to uh, refill in a little bit. So yeah, we clear this little tiny little dungeon. And we've got, like, looks like a little hammer over there. And just off the screen, we also have a chisel. So let's pick up the hammer and the chisel. And luckily, after Mr. Tumnus picks up the hammer and chisel, uh, you don't have to go back through that little mini dungeon. You just get to uh, get whooped right back to uh, where that uh, person was uh, encased in the plaster. Get me out of here. You chip away with the hammer and chisel. Ow, get me out of here. Be careful, Mr. Tumnus. Ouch, ow, careful, ow. Ow, careful, ow. And Mr. Thomas is freed, Leonardo da Vinci. There he is, it's the famous artist, Leonardo da Vinci. His famous work, Mona Lisa, Grassi Grassi. Thank you for releasing me, friend. I was just putting the finishing touches on my new masterpiece when a monster blasted me with wicked plaster. His name was, uh, Soda? You shout, Zoda, why? Sherlock was right. He asked me about a curious artifact I saw while in an old castle to the east. You shout, the block, Leo. But, hmm, he, he's going to tell us, but he wants us to uh, tell us about his masterpiece. And Mr. Tumnus says, nah, I think uh, you got to change the hairdo up. Look at that, Mr. Tumnus has changed time by uh, making the Mona Lisa change. And uh, besides giving us an invention to get us to that castle to the east... Leonardo gives us a katana, the final upgrade to the uh, melee weapons. And it's kind of a little bit of a, a pun, I guess, because uh, I talked about the Ninja Turtles earlier, and the Ninja Turtles, uh, they had all like ninja weapons, and Leonardo used a katana. So this Leonardo gives us a katana. So it's a little, I guess, a callback to uh, the Ninja Turtles cartoon. So there's Mr. Tumnus and his flying machine. Hey, there's Mr. Tumnus. Uh-oh. Mr. Tumnus, can you hear me? Mr. Tumnus, can you hear me? Phew, I sense, I found you. I can sense that you're flying. Micah, you won't believe what's been going on. You tell the story, blah, 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 flying machine, blah, blah, Leonardo. Things have been crazy here, too. Aliens came to Sea Island. Uh-oh. That's where Mike and the children were. Hypnotized Dr. Jan found out how to time slip. They're after the blocks and they may be setting a trap for you. Be careful, Mr. Tumnus. We don't know what these evil beings are capable of. Mike, oh wait. Disconnected? Well, it looks like, uh, I guess Dr. J, uh, went to Sea Island. He left his lab in Seattle. I don't know why he did that, but, uh-oh. We have a least brief little interlude here. We just end up on this island. And yeah, there's not much to do on the island. But if you just step back onto your helicopter, you'll miss out on this uh, heart. And uh, we want that heart. Because uh, 
every little bit of life counts. We kind of got a, a long, uh, tough dungeon. The boss won't be as tough. Uh, it'll be another form of Zoda, but still, it's kind of a little tough dungeon with a bunch of tricky traps and tricky enemies, so every bit of life helps. Let me make sure we pick up that uh, heart container and get ready for a landing. And here's that spooky castle that Leonardo was uh, talking about. So the block must be in there. What else is in there? Find out in the next episode. Thanks for following along. Have a good day. See you then. Bye.